Nancy. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle with the Building for Kids with my wombat friend from Australia. <laughs> and today I have Miss Kathleen from the Appleton Public Library with me, as well as Miss Nancy of the Fox Valley Symphony Orchestra. Hi there. It's so <laughs> wonderful we can get together like this using technology and our imaginations until we're able to gather safely in person again. That is right. Last time we all met, met, Nancy played her cello, sang, and led us through a great song from Down Under, Australia. <laughs> the song was called Home Among the Gum Trees. Thank you, Nancy, for doing that. I love doing that, and I forgot to have my script all queued up, so I started talking right away. Oh, I'm such a talker. And anyway, it was so neat to learn about Australia. I have friends who live there now, and I can't wait to visit someday, but now we're staying safe at home. And we met so many cool animals. There was a kookaburra laugh. I love that one. And I don't know if I knew how a kookaburra laughed before this. In fact, all of the stories have been new adventures for me, which is so much fun. And there were kangaroos, which we don't have one in Wisconsin. But we do have possums that are different than Australians. But we have possums and we have the sheep that we did in the story. I love the kangaroo that you did, Michelle, and all of your home among the gum trees and the plum trees and all that. Oh, we're gonna sing that in the song and we're gonna do there laughing and we're gonna get to gurgle. Mm -hmm. and also yeah, it, it does remind me of a, a folk tale that I know that includes a lot of the animals that we've already met and a couple of new ones, including <gasps> this one. Yep, you and may I brought already know. Yes, yeah, a koala. <laughs> And of course, a folk tale you might already know too is a story that's uh, been told out loud, passed down from one generation to another. A generation being a group of people that are born in and around the same time frame, and um, so and then the, those people get to pass the story on to the next generation. Grandparents. That is right. Mm -hmm. Well, I bet every family has stories, too. And sometimes, have you ever noticed that your mom or your dad or even you tell a story differently when you tell it to different people? It's the same story, but it's kind of fun to tell it in different ways. Oh, and animals. They oftentimes have animals talking, and that's so funny because I can be a cow. <laughs> and I can be a seagull. This one I love. I push my thumb down, and then I use my finger really lightly, and I can sound like a seagull. Isn't that great? Oh, I love it. I don't think we have any seagulls in this story, but the one I have in mind was one that was first told by the first people who lived in Australia, the Aboriginal people. And as more and more people told the story over years and years and years, and it spread throughout the world, there came to be more versions or ways to tell it. And I heard this story first from a librarian at the Appleton Public Library. And I know it as Tiddalick the Thirsty Frog. Uh, I'm gonna need some help telling this story though. Hey Nancy, could you uh, play some of your beautiful music here and uh, help bring it to life? To. I'm scrolling down to T because on my iPad, I can make up musical ideas in my thinking. And then there's a music writing program and what helps me to write music sometimes is I have to have words to come up with a song story. I wrote Tiddalick the Frog, Tiddalick the Frog. And I thought he isn't very kind or aware of anyone at all, at all. Oh no. And then that helped me to write my tune. So here's my tune about Tiddalick. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful. 
on just the right setting for our story. Long, long ago, when the earth was green with plants and blue with waters aplenty, there lived a giant frog named Tiddly. <laughs> Tiddlick was bigger than the trees and the rocks all around him. And when he was happy, the earth was calm. But when he was grumpy, the earth trembled. Friends at home. Friends at home, what do your grumpy faces, faces look like when Miss Nancy played that music? How do you look when you feel grumpy? <laughs> oh, gosh. One morning, Tidlick woke up very, very thirsty. And because he was so thirsty, he was also very, very grumpy. Grumpy faces. Let's see those grumpy faces one more time. Tiddlick went to a lake to take a drink. And because he was so thirsty, he drank and drank and drank until he had drunk all the water in the lake. Oh, those are such fun noises. Friends at home, can you make those slurping drinking noises with us? Oh my gosh. He swelled up with water and got bigger. He was still thirsty and still grumpy. So then he came to a river and he drank and drank and drank until he had drunk all the water in the river let's drink up that river friends filled up with water and got bigger but he was still thirsty. Thirsty. Mm-hmm. And still grumpy. Grumpy. <laughs> Next, he came to a billabong, which is a kind of a pond in Australia. And he take a took a drink. And he drank. And he drank. And he drank until. He had drunk all the water in the billabong. Let's drink up that billabong, friends. <laughs> but even though he swelled up with water, he was still thirsty. thirsty. And still grumpy. <laughs> because Tiddly was so grumpy, he was greedy. He did not want to share any of that water. So day and night, he drank and drank and drank until all the lakes and all the rivers and all the billabongs, the streams, the springs, the swamps, all the water in the world was gone. He had drunk 
every last drop of it. Oh my gosh, that would be a lot of water to drink. Would you guys think you'd be really full if you drank that much water? Mm -hmm. Big, oh, and fat. That's, That's a lot right. of slurping. Sidlik was so swelled up with water now that he could not hop. Mm -mm. He could not move. Mm -mm. All he could do was close his giant eyes and sleep. But without water, the earth dried and cracked, rivers turned to dust, the leaves drooped on the trees. Flowers drooped and withered. Oh my gosh. Have you guys at home ever felt like a wilting flower? Just feel kind of sad and droopy? What does that look like? Can you pretend to be a drooping flower with us? Oh, everything was still. The animals cried, there is nothing to eat. There is nothing to drink. We need water to live, but Tidlick has drunk all the water in the world. What can we do? The wise old wombat said, we must ask Tiddalik to please give back the water. So the animals went to Tiddalik and asked him. They pleaded with him. Wombat said, there is no green grass for me to eat. Kangaroo said, I cannot hop high anymore. I am too weak. And Koala said, I cannot eat the leaves of the gum trees. They have all withered. <laughs> Kookaburra said, I cannot laugh lonely anymore because my throat is too dry. <laughs> but Tidlick did not open his eyes. He did not move. The wombat said, I know if we could make Tidlick laugh, the water would spill out of his mouth. Yes. Kookaburra said, I, I can try laughing as loudly as I can, and maybe Tidlick will laugh too. Oh, does everyone at home know how to laugh like a kookaburra? I think we should all laugh together. Maybe we can all be loud enough to make Tidlick laugh too. <laughs> Tiddalik laughed, and thanks for helping, but it was not loud enough, and it did not wake up Tiddalik. Tiddalik did not move. Kangaroo said, I know a riddle. How is water like a kangaroo? Hmm. Hmm. How is water like a kangaroo? Any guesses? All right, you're gonna have to tell us, kangaroo. Mm -hmm. How is water like a kangaroo when it is in a spring? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you That's some good. of the folks listening knew that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> and Tidlick opened one eye, but did not move. It's like winking. <laughs> Oh, and then koala. I remember that gum tree, that gum tree song. Maybe the gum tree song will get him to laugh. I could sing a song. Oh, let's do that. And if you're at home and you remember the actions, give me a home among the gum trees. 
trees with lots of plum trees. A sheep or two, a kangaroo, a clothesline out the back, veranda out the front, and an old rocking chair. Miss oh, Nancy, can we do it one more time? One more time. Give me a home among the gum trees with lots of plum trees. A sheep or two, a kangaroo, a clothesline out the back, veranda out the front, and an old rocking chair. Oh, beautiful. Love it. And Tillich opened both eyes when he heard that song. But then he closed him again and he did not move. Oh, gosh. Wombat said, let's all make silly faces. All of the animals made the silliest faces they could. And everyone at home, can you make some silly faces? Maybe if we all work together. Oh, Miss Nancy, that's a good one. Oh, I like that, Miss Kathleen. Oh, I love those faces. <laughs> yeah. And Tillick opened both eyes and smiled. But he did not move. <laughs> Just then, the animals heard a strange, tiny voice calling. Let me try. Let me try. It was who had slithered up from a billabong. I will dance, Eel cried. Eel wiggled slowly at first. And fast. And faster. Can everyone at home wiggle too? Can you wiggle like an eel? He wriggled and twisted and turned himself into weird and funny things. Then he jumped on Tiddlick's tummy. And spun around like a tornado. <laughs> that eel's little tail tickled Tiddlick's tummy. Tiddlick opened his eyes and began to shiver and quiver. He had to giggle. The giggle became a gurgle. The drops of water were trickling out of Tillich's mouth. The gurgle became louder and louder until the earth trembled. And all of a sudden, Tillich began to laugh. It was very loud. Oh, can we all laugh at home? How loud do you think that laugh was? Can you laugh as loud as Tiddlet? <laughs> the animals ran for shelter as water gushed out of Tiddlet's mouth. Oh. Every drop of water out of his belly. The water filled the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the swamps, the ponds, and the brings and the billabongs until there was water plenty once more. New life came back to the earth as if from a deep, dry sleep. Trees grew new leaves. Flowers bloomed. 
Green grass blue. Oh my gosh, everything's thriving again. Do you think we can all bloom like flowers or grow like grass? Well, let's try it. The animals drank their fill of water and were happy again. Eel swam back to the billabong. Mm -hmm. Bye! <laughs> Wombat had plenty of grass to eat. And kangaroo jumped high again. And koala had plenty of leaves to eat. Yay! Yay! And kookaburra laughed his loudest laugh. Oh my gosh, everyone at home, you can laugh too. <laughs> And Tidlick, he became a little frog again. A really tiny one. Mm -hmm. And all of Tidlick's. And all of Tidlick's descendants, or the frogs that were born after him, were smaller like this, too. And to this day, when the people of the land see a frog drinking and burrowing himself under the ground, they know that there's going to be a dry spell in the weather. Mm -hmm. The end. Oh my gosh, Miss Kathleen, that was wonderful. Miss Nancy, that was wonderful. It makes me think Oh, it makes me think of frogs I have heard of before, real life frogs. Mm -hmm. They're called Australian burrowing frogs. Oh. They live for like 10 to 15 years and they burrow underground during droughts. Is this story about those real frogs? Yes, I believe so. You know, long ago people, uh, when they were first learning about how the world worked, they used stories and told stories to, to help explain the world around them. And uh, that's one of those tales. There's actually also a, an, an eel, an Australian eel, too. A short fin and a long fin eel. So that's also a, an animal of Australia to know about. So, wow. yeah, cool. And a lot of times in nature, animals do different things to tell us that something's going to be happening. And it's interesting how a lot of those folk tales and mm -hmm. other native peoples like the original Aboriginal people and Native Americans, they know how to look to the signs of different things so that they know what to do because the earth and the animals are telling them things. Well, we have mm -hmm. that in fall when the trees turn to colors and mm -hmm. the bubbling of the water. That's why I liked that cycle song opening because mm -hmm. everything's in these neat little cycles yes yes the seasons the turning of the seasons and uh speaking of the aboriginal tale if you'd like to read some versions of that tale that are closer to the original story there are two that i recommend on hoopla our electronic one of our electronic services at the library this one is the barefoot book of animal tales the greedy frog retold by Naomi Adler, and another one is Tidlick, the Greedy Frog, retold by Nicholas Wu. There's what that one looks like right here. So look for those on Hoopla. And for more information on our electronic services at the library and our new curbside pickup service. Ooh, awesome. Um, Check uh, the library's website, apl.org, for more information.
what I liked about the story is that all the animals worked together. And I think by them working together to get to look to laugh, they were able to accomplish it. None of them mm -hmm. done it on their own. And right. if somebody's greedy, they first asked and pleaded, but then they came up with a plan and they worked on it together to, to overcome greed. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a big moral to the story. And that's why I think I like the story so much is it has a really good moral, kind of like yeah. Aesop's fables and you know, the little red hen and some of those other neat stories. Maybe other people have favorite stories with a good moral. They could share that in the in the link at the bottom, some of their favorite stories, so we can read some of their favorite stories too. They certainly could. And speaking of working together, I want to take a minute to thank Miss Nancy and Miss Kath Miss Kathleen for joining us today with their talents for such a fun story time. Um, and thank you everyone at home. Like Miss Nancy said, please feel free to share your stories with us. If you have pictures of yourself dancing or wiggling, feel free to share those as well. Your grumpy and silly faces, your videos. Um, absolutely, please feel free to share those. Um, and until next time, we will see you again soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, ABUMC, for letting me use your space. And Fox Family Symphony and Building for Kids and the library. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank everyone. you, everybody.